Mr. Speaker, I have two arguments for you mainly today. First is, what is the role of the state? Because what we're, what's happening now is that dictatorships, specifically dictatorships that don't uphold human rights, are not following the roles of the state. Now let's go into what, what are the roles of the state. First of all, the roles of the state are to protect its people in exchange of the people helping into contributing to what, this, what the country is all about. Because we believe that some dictatorships are, yes, good. Like, for example, Singapore, they have a benevolent uh, dictator which helps and contributes to their society. But what but, but in some societies or some dictatorships, we see that the, up, the, the roles of the state are not being upheld. So that's why we're targeting these kinds of dictatorships and these kinds of regimes. Number, now, let's, now let's go on to the specifics of our debate. Because what we see in our debate today is that um, dictatorships cannot uphold the rights of the state because first of all, People are getting ham uh, people's rights are getting hampered. Second, they're not people sometimes get killed. People sometimes get abused. Because what happens here is that we need military intervention in these kinds of states that are being abused. For example, um, the the intervention in the Middle East. There were a lot of interventions that needed that were needed there because first of all, the country could not fend for themselves. The citizens' rights were being were being shattered and were not being upheld. But the opposition might come up here and say that, hey, what happens to the government when they're not there anymore? What happens when we intervene and then the, the, the structure of their government is then shattered? We did, what we're going to do is that before we leave these countries, after we intervene, after we intervene with them, we're going to help them develop their society first. We're going to help them create another structure and create another another structure for them to follow before we let them go. Because what because we all know that they're going to be in a disarray if we completely destroy their structure. Now let's go on to my second argument. Um, that dictatorships are prone to abuse. Why? Because what, hap what, what happens here? Dictators have no checks and balances. They're the only one who are, who are fighting. There's something completely wrong with this system because we see that there is no checks. So what happens is that any time the dictator wishes to be corrupt, any time that these, these kinds of dictator wishes to kill part of his people or abuse some of his people or withhold human rights, what happens is that no one's... Um, Every, every person in that, in that country is being hampered. Every single one of their human rights are not being upheld. And we see that this is not a productive thing to do. And we see that, everybody, uh, that humans in a whole are being hampered. So let's move on. Let's cite an example where dictators were, were a threat to not only the country but also to the international community. What happened in World War II is a dictator rose to power. A dictator seized control of some of the countries in the world. And what happened is that everybody was everybody was um, damaged. Everybody had parts of them or economic structures depleted. People were killed. People were abused. So that's why we're trying to take out these kinds of dictatorships because we see that people are going to be threatened in the in the long run. And that at the end of the day, more dictators like these, more chances of people abusing us, more chances of world another world war occur occurring are going to happen. And let's go on to the and let's go on to another point that I just thought of now. Is that the global of, glo of globalization? Because in this world today, we are completely glo we are globalized now. So we can we can how can dictatorships or people in, in dictatorships continue to develop if we are if we are being hampered and these people inside these countries are not being are not able to integrate with other other aspects of society? Because in today's in today's society, we see that almost everybody is is interrelated through computers, not just computers, to the social media. Sorry for relating this in the But there, we need to believe that we, we need we need to know and we need to show everybody that dictatorships are no longer efficient, especially especially the dictatorships that keep on hampering our human rights. That's why we need to solve this problem now. Because if the problem is not yet solved, the system will continue to attack the people. The system will continue to attack everybody in their country. And the system will continue to threaten the entire the entire world. So that's why we need to follow the movement, the movement of radical change. Thank you guys.